I would like to take you on a journey. Can you imagine you're with your brothers and sisters playing on a beach and a small boat pulls up. As you and your siblings approach to take a closer look, you're grabbed and pulled into the small boat. Some of your siblings escape and run. However, you're forced in and before you know it, you are leaving the shoreline and the beach where you played and the village where you lived. You are then taken to a large ship, put into a hold where there are other children just like you. Here you sit, afraid, and wish you were back in your village. As the days pass, more young people are thrown into darkness with you. Eventually you are let out of the hold and into the sunlight, clothed, and you are marched off with a group of other young people, taken away. Eventually, ahead of you, you see fields of sugar cane. As a young woman, my great-grandmother was one of the few young women amongst the young men taken from their village to work in the cane and other primary industries in which this state of Queensland was made. These were young, strong men and women with strong cultures, languages, and came from vibrant, traditional village and family lives. My name is Sonia Minicon. I'm a proud descendant of the Cubby Cubby people of South East Queensland, but also of the people of Vanuatu. And I'm a direct descendant of the people of Ambram, Pentecost, Umbai and Gower. So to acknowledge my ancestors and my culture makes me proud. And to one of the women who have shaped me and many of our Australian South Sea Island families, uh, it just seems like the right thing to do this year. It's 150 years since the first legislated landing of the island was brought to Queensland for the sugar industry. The work was backbreaking. Many became sick, they became weak and many were injured. If they were lucky, they were also able to work in homes as domestics, cleaning and cooking and caring for the children of plantation owners. I often wondered how they mustered the strength to do this work and endured the hardships, but their ability to hold on to their beliefs and newly found faith made these women even stronger. So they grew into staunch and protective wives and mothers. Many also cared for their extended families and communities in which they belonged. The generations of women that were born out of the first recruits grew up with the living knowledge of the struggles of their parents and mothers faced. There was blatant mistreatment and deliberate racial discrimination and a growing push for these families to feel like they didn't belong here. But as women do, they persisted and grew. We were proud and hard-working people with strong family connections and support and the women used this as leverage to grow and succeed. We as Australian South Sea Islanders have withstood the test of time, persevering and protecting our families. And I'm proud to say that I'm a descendant of the women of the trade.